हे एवरी वन सो इन अर्लियर लेक्चर वी टॉक्ट अबाउट द कन्सेप्ट ऑफ लोकल मैक्सिमा लोकल मिनिमा एंड द सैडल पॉइंट वी सॉ दिस कन्सेप्ट फॉर टू वेरिएबल थ्री वेरिएबल एंड इन जनरल फॉर हायर वेरिएबल एंड आफ्टर दैट वी सॉ दैट वंस यू हैव अ पॉइंट वेअर द पार्शल्स आर झिरो देन हाऊ टू डिटरमाइन वेदर दॅट पॉइंट इज अ लोकल मॅक्सिमा ऑर लोकल मिनिमा ऑर अ सॅडल पॉइंट द आन्सर इज वी टूक द हेल्प ऑफ द हिसियन मॅट्रिक्स ओके सो लाईक फॉर एक्झाम्पल इफ यू हॅव एन एक्झाम्पल लाईक दिस एफ ऑफ एक्स वाय सपोज एक्स स्क्वेअर प्लस टू वाय स्क्वेअर मायनस थ्री एक्स प्लस फोर वाय प्लस इलेवन एंड यू वॉन्ट टू मॅक्सिमाइज द फंक्शन ओ यू वॉन्ट टू मिनिमाइज द फंक्शन दॅट मीन्स यू वॉन्ट टू फाइंड द पॉइंट्स एक्स कॉम अ वाय वेअर फंक्शन विल टेक मॅक्सिमम ऑर द मिनिमम वॅल्यू ओके बट नाव वेन वी सॉ दिस काइंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लेम्स इन लास्ट लेक्चर there was no restriction on x and y x and y can be anything okay it could have been anything there was no restriction on x and y today we are going to see how to tackle this optimization problem uh, what is an optimization problem uh, the problem for which you want to find the maximum or the minima okay then such problems are called as optimization problem and when there is no restriction on x and y like the examples which we saw in the earlier lecture earlier lecture like i will post the link in the description okay just before this so there there was no restriction on x and y so whenever there is no restriction on x and y such kind of optimization problem are called as unconstrained optimization problem uh, you are going to study this more in future suppose if you take a course on machine learning or data science or uh, artificial intelligence robotics whenever you study optimization these are the basic classification one studies okay so when there is no restrictions on the variable then such kind of problems are called as unconstrained optimization problem and that's what we saw in our earlier lecture today we are going to see about constrained optimization problem that means what you have a function which you want to optimize that means you want to find the maximum or the minimum value okay but then you have some condition on x and y that means how to find absolute maxima and minima of a function over a closed and bounded domains okay earlier was x y was in r2 now we will see how to tackle the case when you have closed and bounded domains when unbounded domains then that i will talk in the next lecture on lagrange multiplier okay but that is the next one today let's concentrate on closed and bounded domain so i'm going to take two different type of examples so that the picture will be clear and then i will give you some practice problems okay so suppose if you have a function say f of x y is equal to so this is the problem you have a function you want to find the absolute maxima and absolute minima for this function but now your x y can't be anything from r2 it has to be this rectangular plate or i would say the square plate so what is the region in this case it's not the complete r2 x will go from 0 to 1 y will go from 0 to 1 so what you have you have a square which is closed and bounded okay closed because the boundaries are included bounded because it's a bounded set so your x y should be here so i have to find those points in this square plate where this will have maxima or minima okay so now we kind of do the same thing like earlier when there was no restriction what did we do you take the partials you equate it to zero and then you get the critical points what are the critical points the points where the partials are zero and both or one of the partials are not defined then those collection of points forms the critical points and on those points we take the help of the hessian matrix to conclude the maxima or minima right now here also we will do the same thing first we take partials equal to 0 but then the theorem which i am applying here which is that theorem the first derivative test if you have an interior point of the domain if you have an interior point that's an important thing of the domain where the function is differentiable and it is having maxima or minima then the partials has to be 0 okay that's the first derivative test so whenever you have closed and bounded domain you divide your problem into two cases case 1 and case 2 what is case 1 case 1 is you play with the interior points and case 2 is you play with the boundary points separately because for the boundary points you can't apply that theorem that partials is equal to 0 because that theorem is only for the interior points 
here this 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 are the boundary points and inside the square are the interior points okay so let's do case 1 first and then we will go to case 2 so this was the function okay so of case 1 interior points so you don't consider the boundary you only consider the interior points now for interior points if you want to find at what points the function will have maximum or minima you take the partials and equate it to zero okay so this is a partial derivative with respect to x this is with respect to y when i equate this equal to zero i get 48x equal to 48y so x equal to y and this equal to zero will give me 48y but y is my x so 48x minus 96x square equal to zero so i have x into 48 minus 96x is zero so x is zero or x equal to 48 by 96 which is nothing but 1 by 2 right now when my x is zero but my x is equal to y so when my x is zero one point is 0 comma 0 and when x is half another point is half comma half so we get two points are both the points critical points no is 0 0 a critical point no why because 0 0 is not an interior point 0 0 is the boundary point okay 1 by 2 1 by 2 is this an interior point yes so in this square plate maximum or minima if at all it occurs this is the only possibility in none of the interior points you can have maximum or minima okay now okay good so interior case is done so just remember this point half comma half that is the point which we got after doing the calculation now we will go for case 2 what is case 2 you have to look for the boundary points now this is the boundary 1 2 3 now see this is a continuous over here but i mean it's not a smooth curve here you have a point 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 so what we do is we go one by one so you first consider this segment you consider this boundary let me call this as oa so you consider oa on in oa my y is 0 because i am on the x axis so what i have my f of x because my y is 0 so this will only be a function of x so what i have is minus 32 x cube because y is 0 now this is a function of one variable you know how to solve the maximum minima for function of one variable you take the derivative you take the derivative equate it to 0 what is the derivative 3 to the 6 minus 96 x square equal to 0 so your x is 0 so what is the point you get x is 0 and on oa my y is already 0 but will this be a critical point no why because again 0 0 is not the interior point for this segment so if you have a segment like this 00 and 10 00 and 10 are the boundary points for this segment and all other points are the interior points so 00 is not an interior point for this segment so again on this line there are no interior points for this line there are no interior points where you can have maximum or minima okay so we played with oa we don't get any point from oa Okay so let's go for next point let's go for ob for ob i am on y axis so my x is 0 so now i will have a function of y why because my x is 0 what do i get if i put the value i get minus 24 y square again a function of one variable you take the derivative you equate it to 0 you get minus 48 y equal to 0 therefore your y is 0 you get only one point but when my y is 0 what is my x it is also 0 is 0 0 an interior point for this segment no because for this segment 0 0 and 0 1 are the boundary points so therefore again on this line there are no interior points where a function can have maxima or minima okay cool now let's go for the next segment let me call this as c let us go for bc on bc what is fixed my y is equal to 1 is fixed right so again i will have a function of x what is this f of x comma 1 what is this this is 48 x minus 32 x cube minus 24 now this is again a function of one variable what will be f dash of x 
it is 48 minus 96 x square and when you equate this to 0 I get x square is equal to 1 by 2 so x is what plus minus 1 by root 2 can x be negative no because x negative x is not in the domain so x equal to minus 1 by root 2 is not possible x equal to 1 by root 2 is possible so what is the point we get 1 by root 2 comma 1 is 1 by root 2 comma 1 an interior point yes it is this point okay so we have this point 1 by root 2 comma 1 okay good now let's go for the last segment which is my ac so on ac what is my fixed on ac my x is fixed x equal to 1 so you will have a function of y so what is f of y means f of 1 comma y you have 48 y minus 32 minus 24 y square right now you take the derivative what is f dash of y 48 minus 48 y you equate it to 0 you get y equal to 1 so what is the point my x is already 1 my y is 1 is 1 comma 1 an interior point for this segment no for this segment 1 0 and 1 1 are the boundary point so again this is not possible okay so case 1 was the interior points and case 2 was the boundary okay and at the end what do we do we collect all the points interior points and the boundary points okay so points suppose you want to find the maxima and minima right so f of x y from case 1 we got 1 by 2 comma 1 by 2 then from the boundary I think that was 1 by root 2 comma 1 and now what is remaining the corner points are remaining so what are the corner points 0 0 1 0 1 1 and 0 so like you can see how derivatives help you to reduce this infinitely many points to only finitely many points now the job is easier find the value what is f of 0 0 this will be 0 what will be f of 1 0 1 0 will be minus 32 what will be f of 0 1 it will be minus 24 what will be f of 1 1 you have to simply add so this is 32 and 24 so how much is this 42 52 56 and 48 minus 56 is uh, minus 8 just check the calculations and then you find f of half half so what is this 48 by 4 minus 32 by 8 minus 24 by 4 and 1 by root 2 comma 1 you do the calculation and then the first homework is you have to tell me the point at which function is having the absolute maxima tell me the point where function is having the absolute minima okay so that's how you take care of the problem when you have a closed and bounded domain now here the domain was like endpoints it was not differentiable so it was not a smooth boundary therefore we have to go case by case suppose if you have a closed boundary like something like i mean smooth boundary so suppose this is a domain now outer side boundary is the circle whose equation i know then the things becomes little bit easy as compared to this so here we had interior case this boundary this boundary this boundary and this boundary so total we had five cases now when you have such kind of domain you will have only two cases interior and boundary case will only be one boundary case because it's a circle and we know the equation of circle so the things becomes easy okay so always see whether you know the equation of a boundary or not if you know well and good okay so now let me take a problem involving this case so here is the question you have a flat circular plate and has the shape of the region x square plus y square less equal one that means this is the region less equal less than means interior part of the circle equal to means points on the circle so this is the plate and you are hitting this plate okay so once you hit the <coughs> plate so <coughs> depending upon the particles the temperature will, will vary i have to find the points on the plate where it will be hottest and the coldest temperature okay so that means maximize and minimize since it's a temperature function so hottest and the coldest points okay so that's what we have to do here now again when you see such kind of question oh it's a closed and bounded domain okay think that we have to divide this into two cases interior points and the boundary points so for interior points what will you do 
as we did earlier for interior points you divide for interior points you take the partials and equate it to zero so what is t with respect to x so case one interior points t with respect to x is nothing but 2x minus 1 and t with respect to y is 4y when you equate it to 0 your x is what 1 by 2 and y is 0 is half comma 0 an interior point yes half comma is 0 over here okay good now let's go to the boundary boundary now here in this case for boundary points no need to split like earlier we had segments so we had to split no option now here you have a smooth boundary so what is that boundary boundary is nothing but it is represented by this nice equation okay so from what do you have here you have y square is 1 minus x square and now you put the value here so we have t of x is x square plus 2 times 1 minus x square minus x okay because this points the temperature is on this on the circle points so it will this is the temperature function and this is the equation of a circle so it should satisfy both the equation that's why i'm substituting y square over here you can also substitute x square over here but then you will have square root in the picture which i don't want that's why this is the best substitution y square now what do you have this is nothing but x square minus 2x square plus 2 minus x now this is again a function of one variable and you know how to solve one variable case take t dash of x this is minus 2x minus 1 so when this is equal to 0 your x is what minus 1 by 2 and when your x is minus 1 by 2 what can you say about y square it is 1 minus when you take the square it is 1 by 4 3 by 4 so what is your y plus minus root 3 by 2 okay but is this inside the domain root 3 is what 1.7 so yeah this is 0 point something so what are the points so for interior point i got the point half comma zero for boundary my x was minus half and what did our y came out to be our y came out to be plus minus root 3 by 2 So from all these infinitely many points, you have only these three points. Okay, so if this is minus half here, so this point and this point, this is my minus half. So the coldest or the hottest temperature will be only at these three points. Okay, now this is the second homework for you. You have to tell me which is the point of hottest and coldest temperature. Okay, so what will you do? You will find T of half zero you find t of minus half comma root 3 by 2 and find t of minus half comma minus root 3 by 2. See what is the maximum and what is the minimum value and tell me which are the points. So this is your second homework. And now let me give you two more homework problems. So these are the two homework problems for you. This is a first function. So when you draw this region in the first quadrant, you will get a triangle. It's a closed and bounded triangle. So again, divide into the cases interior and the boundary for boundary you will have three lines and after that at the end when you collect all the points do not forget the corner points okay that's for this and for this again the same thing here you have a rectangular plate triangular plate rectangular plate so solve this problem and comment the answer for this question as well so i hope now it's clear to you how to solve a problem when you have a closed and bounded domains in the next lecture, we will see when you have closed and unbounded domains or when you have some constraints, then how to solve it using Langrange multiplier method. So yeah, if everything is clear, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. And if you have any doubt, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you.